today's show was inspired by the 2020 Kansas Fest mega podcast and Myrtle the Turtle. Untitled Goose Game, you say? No, the Apple II had it first with this equally mysteriously named game. Follow a goofy goose through a maze of puzzles to hone your logic and reasoning skills and maybe have fun doing it? Rumor is that Warren Robinette worked on this game. Gertrude's Secrets. Gertrude is flying to her nest. Okay, so we move a little green box with IJKM. And let's see what happens. Look at that. When I move the box over a blue object, part of it turns orange. Okay, move the blue flower into the box. And that opens the secret door. But... Uh, before I go into the secret door, let's see what's on the right. Okay, a different room with blue walls, and it starts me on a path and leads through many rooms. Okay, so this object is a bird. You can pick up a bird, a blue bird. Now let's see, blue on purple, would that work? Yeah, you notice how the... Um, <laughs> There are boxes drawn because of the bite boundaries. Okay, so let's see. I got to put Herman's hat on his head. Okay, this is Herman's head from the 1990s, probably. Now, yes, yeah, so I got to use control, IJKM, to single step it. And this is fun because look at the color changes, the white, color on color. Oh, a noisy bird. Control S to stop him. Okay, question mark to see all the special keys. Okay, so this little maze should take me back to the game when I'm done. Control S. Okay, leave him chirping. Do I have a joystick? I'm not going there. I'm using the keyboard. Could use the mouse in Micromate to simulate a joystick. All right, so now you got to start off by dropping the flower in the box, not on the box. Okay, then you go into the secret room, and we're in Gertrude's puzzle room. So let's go up to Gertrude, and there's a treasure room and a storeroom, but uh, one thing kids may want to do is uh, pick a different uh, set of pieces. So you go to the new piece room, and then you got your favorite shapes. So let's pick the bug. Okay. And what do I do? Drop it on a room with pieces in it. Okay. Okay, so now we got uh, bug shapes. Okay, and you could edit these shapes. So like, if you don't like that shape, you can take it down here and put it in the room and edit pixel by pixel. All right. And now you got a new shape. Okay, and then you drop it and they all look the same. Okay, now our treasures will come here when we complete puzzles. All right, there's Gertrude the goose. Got to pick up the goose. That's what's for dinner. No. <laughs> all right, array puzzles. Puzzle room one. Okay, we got all these things, and there are puzzle pieces, and now you just gotta match them up. So the purple duck, and uh, let's see what we got here. We'll just get them right, or we could get one wrong, and it just uh, leaves the shape somewhere else. We have to pick it up again, put it in the right place. Okay, so this is for young kids to develop computer skills. So the green bug, the purple bug, and the uh, blue bug, and the other blue piece goes there. Okay, blue, orange, green, apple color. Okay, and Gertrude gives you a, a little prize. So I just got a truck or a tractor. Nice. So that's in my treasure room now. 
Um, if you want to learn how to play these puzzles, you could go down here and look, and it gives you these instructions, which are meant to be obvious, right? Oh, there's your instructions, three by three array, okay? Yep, so how many people can play this without reading instructions? That's interesting. Green on orange. Woohoo. Okay, let's get another puzzle. Drop a box, and Gertrude is a flying goose. And we have some dinosaurs and bugs, so how about a purple dinosaur? Oh no, where does the purple dinosaur go? I love you, Lou, love me. Okay. Now let's just get him right. Oops, my bug is in the wrong place. Why? Okay, so there's, uh, it's got to be in the bug column. There you go. All right, so put your bugs in the right columns when you're filling out your bug reports. Okay, blue. All right, so what are kids learning here? Spatial orientation. Oh, why did I get that wrong? It's a duck, but it's not in the duck row. Yeah, see, I'm thinking vertically. Yeah, so I think I need to play this as I age. <laughs> okay, another purple dinosaur. Okay, and our little edited shape here is orange. All right, so there are two puzzles in this sequence of arrays. So we're learning about arrays which eat up memory. And, but don't worry, JavaScript has enough memory for anybody who wants it. Yeah, we used to worry about memory leaks. Yeah, we used to worry about squeezing code into 32K or 64K. Oh boy. Okay, another dinosaur, and more bugs, and it's raining. I like the sound effects when I stream in thunderstorms in the rain. Okay, makes it interesting. And let's finish this and hear some music. Okay, so I've learned to turn the volume down on the Apple Music and sound as I'm recording. I'm recording into a Zoom recorder. Okay, so now let's go back and see if we have some treasures. So it's a simple game. There's um, more puzzles. And let's see. So if you look in your treasure room, we should have two. We have our tractor. What happened with our other puzzle? Ooh, is there a bug in Gertrude's secrets? Or is it in the storeroom? Nope. <laughs> yeah. So, or maybe I didn't really win it. Okay, train puzzles. So here, you gotta read some instructions, but basically there's some similarity. Now I lost my goose. Yeah, if you um, don't pick up Gertrude, and you're gonna have to go back and get her. Okay, so don't leave your geese lying around. Oh, that's probably why my storeroom doesn't have it. Yeah, I didn't pick up my puzzle piece. All right, Gertrude, so now it should be in the storeroom. So you like your orange head? Okay, the orange and green head. Okay. And let's look in the treasure room. Okay, there's my uh, goose waist bat. Oh, it's a t-shirt, a goose t-shirt, nice. All right, so there's train puzzles and loop puzzles, and some of these will stump you. Um, you may want to look at the how to play for the loop puzzles. So diamonds inside the box, and you may want to read more if you really want to know. Oh, look at that, blue and purple, nice. Okay, so drop Gertrude, she has a secret. Guess her secret about which pieces. Put a piece in the box. If it belongs, it'll stay. So this is um, experimental learning here. Okay, Gertrude, let's play. All right. So this could actually be fun. So does a duck, an orange duck, go in the box? No. Does an orange bug go in the box? Yes, it does. And what about an orange, whatever that is, Tyrannosaurus? No. Okay, so do we just put bugs in the box? 
Looks like it. Yay! Okay, I want a trophy. All right, but I have to take Gertrude with me. Now it gets harder. Ooh, intersection and union. Okay, let's guess. Is the bug in the intersection? No. Well, let's try it somewhere else. Is it in this square? No. Is it in this square? No. All right, so we're not looking at that, but let's see this color matter. How about a different color bug? No. And another color. All right, let's try the other shapes. Oh, the bug is there. Oh, oh it goes there. That's interesting. So, all right. So there's something about green. Let's see, is there an intersection on a dinosaur? No, green pieces are there. All right, so there's a color in the middle probably that we have to figure out. How about orange? I want to see what goes in the intersection. Nope. Just keep stacking them on top of each other. So these must be shape tables. X drawing or yeah, tracking the position of every shape. All right. Yeah, I've never really figured out how that intersection works without reading the instructions, which I didn't read. Okay, purple bug, that didn't go in the intersection either. All right, but you have to pick another color. Oh, nice. Yeah, let's pick one of these and put it here. No purple bugs. Uh, orange bugs? No, no, it's not a purple bug then. Uh, orange. So this is how your kids learn the primary apple colors. Purple, orange, green, and blue. Okay, so put all the orange pieces in here. Let's see if we win anything. Yay, nope. Purple dinosaurs, not allowed. Okay, orange dinosaurs in there. No, it didn't make it there, so I'm going to put it back in the orange box. Okay, so there is no intersection, and I won a walkie-talkie radio or a cell phone from the 1980s. That's probably what it is. Okay, those are, there's two more puzzles that we'll quickly do. The train puzzles. Okay, how to play. I don't want to know how to play, I just want to do it. All right, we're going to make a train. There's a duck, so, you, so let's see, one line between boxes means pick another duck or another blue purple. So let's uh, do another duck. Okay, and then something similar, a green duck. Can I just do ducks? Duck, duck, goose. Yeah, that's where duck, duck, go comes from. Okay, we need another green thing. Uh, ducks and bugs. Okay, green thing. I could do a green thing. So it's exploration by kids. Yeah, try to put a bug in there, and it has nothing in common with the previous. So the bug falls down. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. That song was about nuclear war, by the way. <laughs> Yep, we got the crown. Okay, are we done yet? No, we got another puzzle. Yeah, number six. Okay, so here are our pieces. And now the double arrow, the double line means something different. So you can't put one of those dinosaurs or another orange. So let's put a purple bug over here. Yay. And not a bug. How about an orange duck? Okay, not duck. How about uh, another bug? Okay, oops, what's wrong? It's orange, oh, okay. So, yeah, this is not good for colorblind people. Okay, 
Well, maybe it would help. Okay, so now uh, that was a bug, right? Yeah, you gotta love the overlays uh, when you grab and move things on top of each other. So those white pixels are generated by unioning of WASI things. Okay. Yes, thank you, Waz, for giving us these NTSC artifact colors. And bluebird shining on me. That's what Data sings. Star Trek Picard. I won! Yay, I'm a secret master. Okay, now what can I do? I could play it all over again, or I could go see my treasures. Oh, there's more puzzles. Yeah, so if you really want to challenge yourself with same and different. So, that's pretty cool. Gertrude's secrets, and where are my treasures? Here they are. And Gertrude is not a treasure. But I could move her on top of all these icons and see how XORing happens. So her eye fell into the purple dot there. That's cool. And what do you got, PC? Oh, wow, there's hidden messages in Gertrude's secrets. Look at that. Uh-oh, it could be satanic. I, the parental advisory. All right, have fun. Next, I'm going to talk about turtle spaces. Welcome to turtle spaces. Look at that, the turtle in orbit around the planet with these huge buildings that should really crash into it and implode. But welcome to Turtle Spaces. Okay, so here is your turtle. Now you can do things in logo, like draw a square, the simple way, forward 20, um, then right uh, 90, and uh, forward 20. But can you go up? up 90. Wow. And then you could go another forward 20 and you have a 3D object which you can now rotate. So on my Mac pad, if I use one finger click and the other finger rotate, I can rotate the 3D object and with the mouse up and down and left and right. So this is what's really cool because we need to get familiar with 3D orientation. So like if I'm pointing up like that and I do left 90, ooh, left is not where I thought it would be, and then forward 20. So you've got a ton of things to explore here, and um, like you could do square 30, and there's a square, or you can, uh, let's see, down 90 and do a cube, uh, 20. There's a cube. So you have 3D objects. And let's see, if also like if you use two fingers and you, you could zoom in and out. So this is really cool and really great to experiment with. Now there's a whole bunch of examples that come with it, and that's what I'm going to walk through today. I plan to do m more sessions, uh, more episodes showing more features of Turtle Spaces as I learn more. Okay, so now, let's see, there's a catalog command. Let's see, there's a cat, yeah, cat, and here's your examples. And you have a whole bunch of examples to play with. So let's start with an airplane. I just want to walk through a few of them, and the defined airplane, and now it's going to draw an airplane. So the turtle is moving and drawing all the parts of the plane. And what's good about this, you could test your rotation and your panning skills. So there's actually a turtle that is your camera that you can manipulate too. So now that we've drawn our airplane, let's um, do that click and pan. So now I'm moving left, now I'm panning right. Now I'm going to pan up and pan down, just moving the mouse. You can see the mouse pointer. And then we'll zoom in with two fingers, and you could see the pixels on the turtle. Now when you zoom, it's actually also um, adjusting your angle. So let's see, if I now rotate around to the, yeah, to the left, I could see 
You could even go inside the airplane. Ooh, now go out. What I want to do is see Myrtle up close. There's Myrtle riding on the plane. And that is so cool. You see Myrtle's face. Okay, and then um, Cat, pick another one. Amiga demo. Okay, now see it defined a lot of words. So you can type ed to edit and c um, demo. So usually the first word up here is what you type to start it. So let's control shift q and demo. And now you have an Amiga ball demo bouncing with sound. Cool. Okay, let's just walk through all the demos for today. Now, how do you stop it? <laughs> escape, pauses. Oh, escape, exits. Okay. So now, cat. Arc heart. Make an inverse heart out of arcs. Okay. So it loads. And edit. Ed. Okay. To arc heart. That's a nice cardioid. Yep, hi Myrtle. And then Myrtle can do like a forward 30 and come closer. And then you can zoom. Yeah, this is what's great. So um, the 3D perspective. So like imagine that there was a planet, a 2D planet that, so when on the planet, it would, everybody would look like this. They just see colors moving around on their planet. But Myrtle is above it. No one can see Myrtle. But if we do like a back 50, oh, BK 50. Now let's see, is Myrtle in the planet? No, Myrtle is still below the planet. So let's do like a forward 10. Oh, now what do they see of Myrtle? They just see Myrtle's paws and uh, neck. So there's a whole, um, the, the book Flatland, and there's a movie, it shows this experience of a 3D object entering a 2D space, and it's, it helps you think about higher dimensions. But now you just have such an easy way to visually teach things like that to kids. So this is limitless. Okay, let's go to Cat. Atom Jar. Okay. I'm just going to guess. Adam's in a jar. Okay, this is your physics, and gases are exploding. So you have a free physics engine, it looks like. That it, with, okay, now escape. So one thing I want to mention is um, this is a multi-threaded system. So you can create turtles that run independently as different threads. So that was probably using many threads for each particle. So there are things that I'd like to do, like the game of life with cellular automata, just to program it in a way that it's multi-threaded and each turtle controls the state of a box. So what you want to do is think of simple little things, to little projects that interest you to try and uh, see and get kids to think the same way. What do they really want to try and what are the steps to get to that goal? And like for me, like drawing the cubes and uh, drawing the, if I want to do a flatland game, I'd want to draw the, the um, 2D shapes like triangles, squares, circles, pentagons, and uh, and um, yeah, show the 2D perspective and then show the 3D perspective. So let's see in this jar, yeah, let, that's your jar. You could just so you know this type of programming, um, the the visualizations and rotations in 3D, that is um, in the early um, computer revolution that was a like a, a dream goal. All right, ball stand. Okay, see, I'm so lazy, I don't wanna see what it is. Ball stand, okay. So let's look at some code here, release PU. PU, 
pip <laughs> up something something up uh, okay so there's set focus so you're repeating the torus orbit so this whole logo language yeah say like snappy is your camera so you're actually having operations on your camera and uh, Libby is a library turtle so let's uh, go back control shift Q and wall stand it's got that um, context sensitive help which is very nice the IntelliSense so here's a uh, ball made out of pyramids or something okay now what's interesting about spheres is um, you can set parameters to how um, many sectors are in a sphere so let me um, just show you that quickly so if I do like a sphere uh, 30 and 16 16 it's almost a sphere but it's like a ribbed ball here and then you could change those parameters um, sphere 30 32 32 and you get something that's more like a ball so that's just something interesting that I've been playing with okay let's just go through the rest of these basic tree let me define forest okay so Myrtle is drawing a forest now you see Myrtle's doing all the drawing so this is where you'd want like a multi-threaded turtle and now see there's some 3d perspective here so let's uh whoa <laughs> zoom in zoom out all right so you got to get used to your controls here and the, like if you have a mouse the right mouse button I think is for zooming okay so is it all 2d that's what I want to know so like I'm gonna rotate yeah rotate yes yeah, so see now you could see that Myrtle drew everything in 2d and Myrtle is in the middle of the 2d world okay so um, 3d is going to be important in terms of augmented reality virtual reality is seems not to be catching on as much as augmented reality and Apple has uh, a lot of technology for AR it is an interest of mine and the potentials of it for use in the daily world in I mean Microsoft is looking at it for business um, but uh, there's a lot of creativity that can be done with AR and something like this in an augmented reality environment would be fascinating like um, to have a turtle in AR that you control and program and many turtles in AR okay uh, let's see cat beehive whoa I'm zoomed where am I <laughs> I'm in the beehive and let's rotate okay I'm zooming I gotta rotate there it is that's the beehive and rain hive look at that yeah there's just amazing stuff here to explore even if you don't program